Today we're going to be responding to a few Muslims. Now I think the reason most people are Muslim because they were raised Muslim. And Islam requires absolute Ooh. submission to Islam, to Allah. This is why the Muslim countries, it's not just they have a majority, it's that they have a 99% they control because Islam requires absolute submission. This is a good tool to taking over the world. If you require absolute submission, that everyone submit to Islam, Allah, Sharia law, it's good. Again, this doesn't deal with the true or falsity of Islam. I'm just saying, why is there billions of Muslims? Because they have an effective structure for uh, taking over the world. What does have to do with the true or falsity of Islam is, okay, so there's all these prophecies. Jesus comes, he fulfills them all. Everyone agrees that Jesus came, he died. The Jews, the Christians, uh, pagan, secular, everyone agrees that Jesus came and he, di he died on the cross. And then the gospels were written the years following after the events. But then Muhammad comes along and he says, guys, guys, 600 years later, an angel just told me uh, Allah actually deceived everyone and made it look like Jesus died, but he, uh, he, he switched it out at the last second. He deceived everyone. Uh, Jesus didn't actually die. He was just a prophet. And actually, uh, yeah, I got this new book. I got a Quran. Uh, it came from God. And uh, yeah, yeah, an angel gave it to me. So it came 600 years later. No one else believes what the Muslims do on Jesus that he died they think oh they think oh yeah all was switched out at the last second how do we know because the quran says even though this came 600 years later in a place significantly far away from the events so why exactly would we trust the quran that was written 600 years later when we could just trust i don't know literally everybody else and the gospels that jesus actually came and that he died on the cross why would we trust something that comes 600 years later? Let's see what they have to say. People pretend like their problem with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is that they don't agree with his teachings. But really their problem is that he was a political ruler in the pre-modern period. That's their real problem. And I'll prove it to you. I challenge you to give me three pre-modern political rulers or even one that you consider to be a moral exemplar. That's the whole point is Muhammad was no different than any of the other political rulers at the time. He was just as immoral as all of them. The difference is, is that Muhammad is claiming that he is the messenger of Allah. He is the final messenger of God. But it doesn't make any sense because why, if you look at Jesus before, Jesus was sinless. Jesus was perfect. And so we're going to have a better prophet, Jesus, and then we're going to go down. Jesus was the most moral person. But then we're going to go down to the last prophet. The final messenger of Allah is going to be even more immoral. He, think it's, he thinks it's some gotcha. Like, well, you think Muhammad is bad? Look at all these other immoral political rulers. Well, those other political rulers aren't claiming to be the final messenger of God. We kind of have higher expect expectations of the final messenger of God than being just as immoral as any other political ruler during that time. The type of things that people criticize Muhammad for وسلم, were also done by literally every single pre-modern ruler, king, or emperor. Every single one. The only reason people don't have a problem with Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu, or Mahavira is simply because they were not political rulers. Because if they were rulers, they would have openly endorsed the types of norms that all other pre-modern rulers endorsed. Slavery, corporal punishment, patriarchy, minor marriage. So critics of Muhammad وسلم, need to be consistent. Your problem is not with the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. your problem is with all pre-modern heads of state. Stop pretending to be principled on this. No, my problem is with Muhammad because Muhammad started a Wrong. false religion saying, oh, I'm actually the final messenger of Allah. You know, even though it's 600 years later, guys, an angel just told me. Guys, an angel just told me. He gave me this book. All that stuff before everyone was wrong before me. They've been wrong for 600 years. Why? Because Allah deceived everyone. And so, you know, Muhammad is just another immoral political ruler is what you're saying. Versus Jesus was sinless. Jesus didn't kill anyone. Jesus didn't have relations with a nine-year-old. Jesus didn't uh, do all these very evil things. Jesus wasn't just a prophet. Jesus wasn't created. He was uncreated. He was begotten, not made because Jesus was God. Jesus is a fulfillment of Judaism. Jesus is the religion of Abraham. There is not a generic Abrahamic faith. There is one Abrahamic faith. There is one continuity, and Islam does not have continuity with that. Her age was appropriate for the time for marriage. For us to judge that age today is what's called presentism. This is, this is not fair. This is not uh, appropriate. What is the average life expectancy? 
30, 30 to 35 years old. Today, it's about 77 years old. Have you met a nine year old before? And have you met a 50 year old man? Do you think that even back then, that they should be getting married and being having, you know, mature relations with a nine year old? I mean, even back then when the life expectancy was that young, do you think a 50 year old and a nine year old should be having relations? Do you think, have you met a nine year old? Do you think they're ready to have relations with a 50 year old man? A 50 year old man who's old enough to be, well in that time, that's old enough to be their grandpa. Um, I'm going to say no, that's not okay. And Muhammad is supposed to be the greatest messenger of Allah. And we kind of have higher expectations, especially when the previous prophet, Jesus, Jesus didn't do anything like that. Jesus didn't pursue nine-year-olds. In Hong Kong and Japan, it's around 80. Okay. So today, when we talk about the age of marriage being 18, that would not be practical for that time. Today, when we talk about, oh, uh, he's too young to get married, she's too young to get married, what do we talk about? They haven't finished their schooling, right? She didn't finish high school, she didn't finish college, he didn't get a degree yet. Yeah. Uh, understand, in those times, you didn't have any of that. So when a girl was physically Wrong. mature, when, when the biological indicators were there, for example, she got her period or you know, other signs that show maturity, they would get married. Because nature would tell them, you are now physically ready to get married. This is kind of concerning. He said, oh, they're biologically ready at nine years Ooh. old. And the thing that's really troubling is that this is still a practice that happens in a lot of Muslim countries, is these child marriages. So not only is he he's defending the actions of the prophet, he's saying, oh, look at the ancient times. But even the ancient times, I don't think a 50-year-old and a nine-year-old should be having relations. And it's still going on today. Jews and Christians have no consistent reason to reject Muhammad وسلم, as a prophet of God. Yes, we reject Muhammad because there's no prior prophecy. There's no continuity. I mean, if you're a Muslim, you literally think, what was happening between Jesus and Muhammad? Uh, Allah purposely deceived everyone and everyone was making these false religions. Uh, Allah is the author of confusion because he purposely confused everyone and then waited 600 years to clarify and give, us a, and give the Muslims the Quran. So why would he purposely confuse everyone? There's, there's no continuity in Islam. Has been the religion since the time of Adam alayhi salam to the time of Adam till the day of judgment. So this is not something that was started or invented or began with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. All of the prophets, they submitted their will, they prayed, they worshipped, as we find in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to that one great creator. So we believe that all of them were Muslim. If you if you read the Quran, the Trinity is all over it. Who is Moses talking to in the burning bush? Why did Jesus say Moses was talking to me? He was speaking to me when the the Trinity, the Spirit in the Quran. I mean, even the Quran. If you go in the back and you look at the map, it talks about how it was started in the sixth century. There's no continuity between. There's just this huge blackout period where Allah purposely deceived everyone and then waited 600 years. Oh, to clarify, guys, actually, I switched it out. I switched Jesus out. He didn't actually die. Everyone before me, they were actually a Muslim. Uh, Moses, he was a Muslim. Uh, Jesus, he, he was a great Muslim. But it, it doesn't, there's no continuity. It's a totally new innovation. It was added on after the fact. Again, Moses worshiped liturgically. He worshiped with incense. There was a priesthood. There is no priesthood in Islam. There's no liturgy in Islam. There's no incense. There's no pre. There, there's none of these things that were essential to the Old Testament, to the Old Covenant worship. So what is it? There's a lack of continuity, and this is how we discern true teaching from false teaching. Is a continuity. We don't just have this perfect line of continuity, and then whoop, it just changes all of a sudden. That but versus Christian Orthodox Christianity has a perfect continuity. Judaism, all the prophecies, Jesus Christ, it's fulfilled. Judaism splits off rabbinical Judaism with the Talmud and then eventually um, Islam it spreads so again these are innovations these are inventions on the true faith again to a Muslim why would I ignore uh, literally everyone else in saying that Jesus existed that he died on the cross that and this was written around the time of Jesus or or I could ignore everyone else and I could uh, follow one guy a political ruler 
who claim to be the final messenger of God, who they admit it has done immoral things. He's just like any other political ruler. But I should trust what he says 600 years later is because he said, guys, guys, an angel just told me. An angel gave me this book 600 years later. Muslims, seriously, why would I follow this? It makes no sense. 600 years later. Thank you. God bless. No, no hard feelings against Muslims. I just don't understand how they answer these questions and why they're defending um, some very immoral things, especially when Jesus was the perfection of morality. He was a perfect man, and then we get a decline. I mean, even a Muslim's got to admit that Jesus was more moral than Muhammad. I'd rather follow Christ than follow Muhammad. And Muhammad's teachings in Islam go above Jesus because Muhammad is the final and greatest prophet. He is the messenger of Allah. Um, let me know if there's any other good Muslim videos I should respond to. I'd leave a like. Thank you.